Hello and welcome back to On The Shelf. So the topic for today's video is my most anticipated manga for the year of 2021. I wanted to give you a quick rundown of some of the releases that are up and coming that I'm looking forward to and also to let you guys know what you might be wanting to check out as well. And I'm also going to kind of group that together with the idea of a collecting goals video. So I want to quickly discuss at the end of this video my collecting goals for the year of 2021, some of the series that I'm hoping to complete and some of the new series that I'm hoping to check out and it's something that I think could be interesting because by the end of the year it'd be nice to see whether some of those series that I was really looking forward to really lived up to my expectations and if I actually stuck to my goals for the year which as we all know doesn't always happen. So yeah first and foremost if you enjoy this video please hit that like button if you haven't already please subscribe of course without further ado let's get straight to it. So starting off with my most anticipated manga of 2021, this is a series that is already released and it's on this list because I haven't checked it out yet but it's something that I remember hearing about late last year and it's definitely something that I will enjoy. So that is Blue Giant which is currently being released by Seven Seeds. They're putting it out in a two-in-one format which is a little bit different but perhaps it's a bit of a longer series and they don't really want to kind of take the risk in releasing them in single volumes, who knows? But this is a series that is all about a student who describes discovers jazz music and if you know me at all you'll know that I really love musical related series so I really enjoyed Beck and some of my favourite anime are like Your Lie in April and things like that. If there's a bit of a romance element in that as well then it will be absolutely perfect. I'm personally hoping for Kids on the Slope vibes where it's a young boy who's kind of getting into music for the first time and uh, gets involved in kind of the nightlife and the, the club life if you like and meets a lot of different people and forms really interesting character relationships. I imagine that this is a really character driven story and it's one that I bet you know, from what I've seen of it, will be absolutely fantastic. Next, coming out in February, I believe, if there is no delays, is the third volume of Daiwa Gelda. It's from the creator of Blade of the Immortal, Hiroaki Samura, and it's one of the wildest series I've ever read. It's got a whole host of different characters, there's a lot of female protagonists in this, so there's a lot of badass female moments, so if that's something you're really craving, then definitely go and check this out. And it's one that's full of surprises, so I have no idea what to expect with this series, and for that reason, I really love it. Okay, next is another upcoming release. This is one that's coming out some point this year, I'm not entirely sure when, and it's being released by Demper, and that is Under Ninja. So this is the creator of I Am A Hero, Hero Kengo Hanazawa and it's his new series which I'm not 100% sure what it's about. I Am A Hero is a series that's all about kind of a realistic zombie apocalypse and from what I understand Under Ninja is about real world ninjas. It'll be really action heavy but it will also be very rooted in reality and I imagine it will be a fantastically compelling read. So please look forward to that and if you want to know more about it then go and check out Demper's Twitter page because they often tweet a lot of things about that series. Now if you've watched my top 10 manga of all time video then you will know that I am a huge fan of D. Greyman and as this series is currently on hiatus any new volume that comes out is just a prized possession in my collection. So of course I'm eagerly anticipating the release of volume 27 at some point this year. So yeah that's all I really have to say about that series but if you want to go and check out what other series made my top 10 list then I'll leave a link to that video somewhere now. Next is sort of a double whammy I I guess. I'm a huge fan of Junji Ito. I love everything he puts out and Viz are absolutely killing it with these releases. There's a new short story collection that's out now called Remina, which I don't actually own, but up and coming this year, we actually have two new series from Junji Ito. That would be Sensor and Love Sickness. These are both a new kind of collection of short stories. I mean, that's really what he's known for. That's his staple. And at this point, if you've read any Junji Ito, you really know what to expect with these releases. So I'm not really going to say a whole lot more other than I'm expecting pretty messed up stuff, some fantastically compelling horror stories, and the releases that Viz put out are so beautiful on the shelf that I really can't wait to own them. Next is a series that I've always been fond of. It's one that I loved as a kid, I watched 
watched the anime on Fox Kids, which later became Jetix, I believe, in the UK. You know, it's something that I hold really near and dear to my heart, and it's something that I've always really wanted to own. That is, of course, Shaman King. This is a series that's being re-released by Kodansha in a wonderful two-in-one format. It's got a new sort of cover design, and there's also a new anime coming out later this year. So if you're a Shaman King fan, or you've always wondered if you'd enjoy it or not, really now is the best time to check it out. It's got a lot of typical shonen tropes, there's a lot of battles and kind of over the top action, but it's just a whole lot of fun, there's a lot of great characters, and if you really can't wait, then Kodansha have already put all of it out digitally, as well as some of the other kind of spin-off series as well, so if it's something that you're really interested in, then I urge you to go to their website and please check it out. In terms of the story, there's not really a lot to say. You know, it's a guy who's a shaman, so he can communicate with the dead and the spirits, and he can use them to kind of fight for him in a way, and there's a whole tournament involved to decide who's going to be the king of the shamans. You know, you can't really make it any more cliche, but I, I assure you it is a lot of fun and it is still worth your time. The next is a wonderful new series from the creator of Monster and 20th Century Boys, Naoki Urasawa, and that is of course Azadora. This is something that I've seen a lot about online, but I haven't heard a whole lot of people talking about it, and from reading the synopsis, I'm really, really excited for this one. It follows the life of a young girl set in a post-war era of Japan through several decades up to present day. And that is all I really know about it and that's all I really want to know. I think this is something that I can kind of say without you know any shadow of a doubt that Naoki Urasawa is a genius, everything he puts out is gold and this is going to be no exception. I really love these old kind of settings so I'm a big fan of Grave of the Fireflies and Wind Rises and things like that, you know those Ghibli films. Azadora looks like it's really going to pull on the heartstrings in that way and kind of be a bit more of a historical based series perhaps. So yeah, something really interesting and something really different that I look forward to owning in my collection. Next on my most anticipated list are two new series by Shuzo Oshimi. Well I say series, they're kind of one-offs. So Dempa is currently going to be releasing, I believe it's just a one volume series called Shino, can't say her name, later on in April. This looks to be somewhat like a silent voice in that it's like a, a girl who's a bit mute and all the kind of issues that she deals with with that, but from the sound of the synopsis, she ends up coming out of that disability through the use of music. And yeah, again, I love musical series and I love Ashimi, so I reckon that this one is gonna be fantastic. And also with just a digital only release is a new short by Ashimi called Waltz. Now, this isn't something that I know anything about at all, and I'm just gonna go in blind. I think a lot of Ashimi's shorts can be hit and miss, like I read the previous one they released called Miss Kusakabe, which was pretty short and really weird, um, but I do look forward to this and I will be sure to let you know my thoughts later on if it's any good. Next is one that I've heard absolutely no one talk about, but I think this one could really be a contender for like underdog of the year, and it's called ZOM 100. It's a series by Kotaro Takata, and it's being put out by Viz. From the synopsis again, it is a story about a zombie apocalypse and our main protagonist is on a journey to try and complete all 100 things on his bucket list before he kicks the bucket. That is the tagline that we are given on Amazon and it's just something that I think looks really compelling. I think the cover looks really good and this could maybe just be a cover buy with very little substance but I do look forward to this one. Again it's out in March by Viz Media so please go and check it out and let me know what you think. And the last three most anticipated releases that I have for 2021 are definitely the hard-hitting series. They are going to be firm favourites and I have no doubt in my mind. So first up we have number five by Tayo Matsumoto. Tayo Matsumoto is a really unique creator. I've spoken about him a lot on the channel before. He is one of the most compelling storytellers within all of manga. Number five looks to be a bit more of a sci-fi based series and it looks really weird. It looks really different. The character designs look really interesting and I have no idea what it's about. It's something that Zach from Uchu Shelf has spoken about a lot and it's something that Viz previously released and then discontinued because 
you know, there wasn't really the interest. But now, you know, with the release of Cats of the Louvre and Ping Pong and all the traction that that gained, they recently announced that they're going to be re-releasing number five in a really nice two-in-one format. So we can expect something similar to the Ping Pong releases, I'm sure. And this is something that I'm gonna go in completely blind with and definitely review on the channel at a later date. So yeah, for all things Tyro Matsumoto, I would definitely recommend as well going and checking out Uchu Shelf's channel, which I will leave a link down below to and yeah that is just something that I think he kind of wished to get released for such a long time and it seemed like a complete pipe dream so I'm really happy that that is getting a release at some point this year and that he'll finally get to finish it. Now for me I am super super excited for a new work from Q Hayashida the creator of Doro Hedoro and that is of course Die Dark. So Seven Seas are putting this out in April this year hopefully and it's a sci-fi based series so the main character his body has this kind of particular affliction and his bones can actually grant wishes so anyone who possesses his bones can have any wish they want granted sort of like a magical genie so he's traveling across the galaxy to try and find out who did this to him and kill him in the hopes that it will bring his body back to normal so it's a a very similar setup, I guess, to Doro Hidoro, but with more of a sci-fi setting as opposed to a fantasy setting. And as a huge fan of Q Hayashida, I think that this is going to be absolutely fantastic. All the characters are going to be great. And the artwork, of course, as always, is really unique. So if you enjoyed Doro Hidoro, then Die Dark should definitely be at the top of your list. Now, funnily enough, my most anticipated read for 2021 actually isn't a traditional manga, it's an art book. So I'm super, super happy that Dempa is gonna be putting out Femme Fatale, which is the artwork of Shuzo Ashimi. So this has no specific release date at the time of recording this video, but it's something that I remember being announced last year, and I think it was set to come out at the end of last year, and then it got pushed to like January, February, and because of everything that's going on in the world, it just keeps getting pushed back but I've seen, you know, samples of it on Twitter. I keep retweeting them. But yeah, you know, I, I'm always advocating more Shuzo Hashimi. And if you love his works as much as me, then this is a must own. It's kind of like got full scale color artwork from him. I follow him on Twitter as well. And he just kind of tweets the most beautiful um, character designs and all that sort of thing. So yeah, really looking forward to that. And it will definitely have pride of place in my collection. So I guess moving on, to the collecting goals for 2021 you know those are some of my most anticipated releases and I definitely intend to buy them but I always like to set myself little collecting goals for the year you know before it kind of really kicks off and I start just buying everything and anything and usually they go out the window pretty early on and I just decide to buy something else entirely but you know these are series that I really want to pick up and I really want to stick to this. So I guess first up for my collecting goals is to complete Sunny. So I really love Taiwan Matsumoto again. As I said, I'm looking forward to number five, but Sunny is a series that's relatively short, but just really expensive. You know, I managed to get volume one pre-owned fairly cheap. It's a really nice hard cover book and all the paper quality is beautiful. Again, you know, reminiscent of Cats of the Louvre. But this is one that I hear a lot of people talking about. It's quite a saddening tale and I don't really want to start it until I have all of it because I know that I'm going to want more as soon as I start. So this is probably at the top of my collecting goals for 2021. With a little bit of luck and a lot of money, um, we will get there. Next, I have a couple of series that I really enjoy reading and I'm hoping that we kind of get the final volumes of them in 2021. So the first of those being Platinum End, which I created a video reviewing in a way on this channel not so long ago. So I will leave a link to that as well. This is from the creators of Death Note. It's a fabulous series. It's currently finished serializing and I believe there's only about 16 volumes in total, maybe even less. So I know it's a bit of a pipe dream because Viz tend to take quite a long time between the end of serialization to actually put out the volumes in English. So it might be 2022 that we get the final volume of Platinum End, but you know, fingers crossed that that happens. And then next up we have 20th Century Boys. So I'm pretty sure that we'll get all of these omnibus kind of Viz Big editions by the end of 2021, culminating in the kind of final 
um, two in one, which will be 21st century boys. Absolutely love Naoki Urasawa. I have read a few of these so far, but like a lot of my friends, we're all sort of saving these up to binge read them. So yeah, I'm hoping that this gets completed this year so that I can finally sort of dive into this series and everything that it's about because from what I've read of it and what I know of it, I think that this definitely could be a contender for my number one Naoki Urasawa work. And I'm pretty sure that when I finish this, I will be doing a Genius of Naoki Urasawa video. So if you enjoy those in that series, then please look forward to that as well. And last but not least for my collecting goals for 2021, I have two box sets that I want to pick up. The first would be the Tokyo Ghoul Re box set from Viz Media. I really love the first one. I binge read that manga and I was left wanting more. So of course, I really want to check out the sequel series to see how it all ties up. I hear it's not as good, but those releases are just beautiful and I'm a huge fan of, you know, the art style in Tokyo Ghoul, so I am really looking forward to that. And then lastly, I really want to pick up the Alita Battle Angel Deluxe box set. This is something that got released quite a while ago from Kodansha and since it was released and announced, I've always wanted it. I'm really worried that they're kind of going to discontinue that because from what I heard, they're going to be re-releasing Battle Angel and Alita in a more standard edition, but I just really love hardcovers and I think the quality of those look really nice and of course when you can get it all in a complete box set that seems to me like the best way to pick it up because you're not left wanting more after one volume. If you enjoyed this video you know hit that like button please share it with your friends you know anyone who might be interested in what's coming out in 2021 and please let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to what are some of your collecting goals for the year and yeah and um, if you enjoyed this content then please stick around I have a lot more coming out very very soon and I hope to see you in the next video so of course until next time guys, stay awesome.